And away we go. Hi there. Hello. 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 Hi. My name is Brendan, and this, is, as always, is Accidental Origin, uh, the weekly show about writing and art and process. And oh my god, I can hear myself. One second. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, that was weird. All right, let's just fix one thing real quick so that those stuff doesn't happen. And away we go. Oh. Oh. Now it's showing there too. Jesus. Okay. Weird echoey things. Weird echoey things. Okay. That's all. Time to start the show. Um. So yeah. Uh. Welcome to Accidental Orange Origin. My name is Brendan. I'm a writer. Uh, this is my weekly web show about writing and all that stuff. If you haven't heard me repeat it 16 times, then I haven't said it enough because that's what I do. I repeat things 16 times. Um, so yeah, um, getting started with today's episode, which is going to be about ideas and brainstorming. Um, as you can see, I just did some doodly stuff on my wall. Uh, in relation with that, uh, but I'm not actually going to be using the wall today. I decided that I didn't like the lighting setup enough, so I'm going to do some computery type things, uh, which should be should be good. Um, yeah, try some stuff out, see how it goes. Um, yeah, so uh, as always, a couple disclaimers before I start. Uh, this is my like news and announcements. Uh, segment here. So, um, uh, channel art, first thing, channel art, officially done. Uh, paid for it, got it all, uh, have it partially set up, but I haven't done it too much, uh, mostly because, um, and I'll get to that a little bit later on in the announcements, but uh, I'm not going to be here next week, so uh, I didn't want to do it this week. I'm going to do a big reveal on the May 29th, which is the next episode. It will be episode four. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a big reveal -y thing. It's going to be cool. Uh, that's going to probably be a little bit of a longer show, I think. I think I'm going to go maybe four hours, maybe five. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Because, um, uh, yeah, I, like, I, I don't think it's going to be like two shows together. But I do want it to be a little bit longer, have a little bit extra content for the week that I have off. Um, so yeah, May 29th, there'll be a big release thing, and uh, I'll tweet that out and all that stuff. Uh, and yeah, there's not going to be an episode next week, because uh, I'm at a convention, and I could probably make it back to do the show and all that stuff, but it's a lot of uh, time stuff, and like it, it's just not going to it's not gonna work. Uh, so I'm taking next week off, um, but I will be back on May 29th. Um, and yay, we're 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 out of the theory days, so we're actually going to be doing some practical stuff, um, like today. So yeah, we're uh, we're in there. <laughs> we're in there. Um, so yeah, uh, and in accordance with that, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about. Uh, direction. Like, what am I doing with the show? Where are we going? Where have we been? Uh, you know, keep us all up to date as to, as to what part of the, uh, <laughs> what part of, uh, the process that we're, we're, we're at. Uh, so yeah, um, the last couple episodes, we've kind of been building towards this point. The point where we actually, uh, start creating something and you know like first episode we covered creativity second episode we covered influence and inspiration um i was trying to set uh a foundation for the artistic process for any artistic process not just writing but just artistic process in general um 
because they're all super similar, similar, not similar. Um, so yeah, I wanted to, to, to build those foundations and today we're going to use those foundations or hopefully use them. Um, I'm going to use the ones that I have, uh, and, and kind of build towards that or, um, build upwards and onwards from that foundation. Um, and creativity and all that is a constant process. Um, you need that foundation so that you can, uh, just let your subconscious do a lot of the heavy lifting for you as, as you go about your other daily activities, right? Like you want, you want to be thinking about being creative, even when you're not thinking about being creative in a weird way. I know that makes no sense, but, but it's really, it's like, it's, it's ingraining a certain thought process and a certain set of ideas into your, into, uh, into your mentality so that, so that everything else you do kind of becomes another part of that. Like an artist who, um, walks around, like can, can analyze, uh, can, can analyze perspective in certain things based on the things they see in everyday life. Um, writing based on conversations around you, characters that appear out of the people you meet. Like there's lots of things that go into being, being a creative person that are subconscious and, and, and the last couple episodes I've been trying to build a foundation so that you can start seeing those things um, come, come, come out, you know? So, um, yeah. So that's what we've covered, you know? Look, failure is the first step of learning. Don't be afraid to be a fool. Uh, try things. Experiment. Uh, make connections. Talk to people. Those are all things that are going to make you a more creative person. And I wanted to talk about creativity and all that before I got to the actual practical stuff. Uh, because those, those are important things that, that is part of the process that not a lot of people talk about per se. Um, especially when it comes to writing. Uh, so yeah. So then, now that we know where we've been, where are we going? Um, so... Ah, ugh, frog in my throat. Uh, so this episode is going to be the first, like the first time we actually work on a short story, uh, like on stream, full on. I did a little bit of prep stuff uh, last week, uh, but that wasn't like super real writing in the way that, like it was, it was spontaneous and it was fun and it was interesting, but it wasn't like sit down, plan, write a story, uh, sort of style thing. And that's, that, 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 those exercises and all that are great. And you can make real things out of them, but this is going to be the first, like, episode number three, like, practical stuff, uh, moving forward with, with the grander vision I had of, of working on projects on screen. Um, I'm not sure how long we're going to be working on the short story, I suspect, uh, based on a few things that I've been reading, excuse me, uh, based on, on, uh, well, not a few things I've been reading, but based on sort of, uh, the way that the lessons have gone so far and, uh, how I've heard streamers and all that talking about how much longer it takes to do certain things. I suspect, I suspect, um, depending on how focused I can be, which apparently is not very focused right now, uh, I suspect it'll take me about seven episodes. Uh, so about two, three months uh, working every week sort of thing. Um, not sure about that yet. Uh, still playing it by year, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I, I, and I mean, as, as part of that, uh, I'm going to have an episode... Uh, while this episode's on ideas and brainstorming and sort of the start of the process, uh, the next episode I think is going to be on outlining and then we're going to do, uh, plotting, uh, well, I guess plotting's part of outlining. So we'll probably do outlining and then we'll do characters and we'll do, um, theme maybe, I'm not really sure. 
but I think those are the next two or three. Uh, it's gonna be like outlining and characters uh, and stuff like that. Um, it's gonna be a little different. Uh, simply like I I did design the show with kind of the idea of doing uh, a lesson and then a practical part uh, and then like kind of a summary whatever part at the end. Uh, and I've totally been keeping to that and that, that's fine. Uh, I just wonder how that's going to work when we kind of get to, uh, uh, are there, are there going to be, uh, specific things that I'll talk about and then not do practical stuff about that, but do just keep doing practical stuff from before. And I realized that sense made no sense. Uh, so I explain myself a bit. Uh, so like, if we're working on character, uh, as one episode of, of seven parts, we're really going to be working on character for several episodes, probably, but am I going to keep doing episodes about character? I don't really think so. I think that would get boring really, really quick. Uh, there's a lot of material, but I don't know if, I think it's better that if like, I think it's better that if I wanted to repeat character like that, uh, I could do it on the next project sort of thing, where I could do another episode in character with the next project, it should kind of show how I, how they differ uh, from this project, per se. Uh, just, you know, brainstorming out loud, right? So, that's what I have planned. Uh, obviously, uh, still, still working through a lot of the kinks, but it, it should be good. It should be good. Uh, I do have a Discord channel uh, that has, um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get the link to work properly so I don't have to like refresh it all the time, uh, but there are channels in the Discord uh, for doing like, uh, giving me suggestions and uh, suggestions for topics and uh, comments and talking about writing and, and certain things like that. Uh, so I will get out to you, I will get that stuff out to you. I'm hoping I can get it done sort of over the next week. Uh, especially since I have next weekend off. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, let's get, I'll get, I'll, I'll work on it. Promise. Ugh. All right. Today's episode, Ideas and Brainstorming. Uh, so, to start off, I'm going to talk a little bit about the writing process. Um, or just process in general, really, but the writing process specifically. Um, so yeah, you want to write a story. You have an idea. What now? You know? Uh, well, the next sort of thing on the list is, is working on your process, you know, um, for, for writing and for artists, uh, the process is, is, is the way that you develop an idea or a concept, uh, from your head on into an actual thing. Uh, either a drawing or a piece of writing or uh, a sculpture, like whatever. Like that's that's what the process is. It's it's the process of taking that idea and and making it a thing. So uh, the so I'm going to talk a lot about process today, and. The thing that I want you you all to kind of kind of take away right now is that process is a matter of individuality. For a thousand artists, there's a thousand different processes, and and everyone does some some things differently. There are a lot of people who do these things the same. There are a lot of people who do similar things and call them different things. So you think they're different, but they're not. Um, 
but there's also a lot of, 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 of unique, unique things that people do. Um, so, uh, keeping that in mind, when I talk about process, I'm not talking, um, and this is, this is sort of a conversation that I've been having on a couple of, of different channels on Twitch lately. Um, <sighs> sorry, formulating my thought. Um, what I'm presenting in this show is my process. Um, I, I'm trying to give people insight into how I write, uh, so that A, people can make suggestions, and B, people can see what I do and try things. Uh, try the things I do, because they may work, but they m may not. In fact, they probably won't. Um, but you never know, right? Like, there are different, there are different ways people, people's minds think. Um, that's why people learn differently and all that stuff. Um, and, and, and processes are exactly like that. Whereas people who are visual learners will do visual processes. Like, there, there's a lot to be said about that. Um, I know people who have copious audio notes. Um, as much as I'm, I, I like audio notes and all that stuff, like, list, sitting and listening to them is such a drag. Um, like... It's, it's, it's committing that time, right? Like, there's, there's a whole set of, of things that, that people do. And, and uh, I'm going to use the example of me and my friend Sam again that I, that I said a few episodes ago. But, like, for me, I, I'm very lean in my writing. Um, I write... I write very focused sentences, um, and I chip away at them to make them better. Uh, and then I expand on them, and I, and I chip away at them to make them better. I don't write a ton of words just to cut them all. And I've read a lot of stuff about that, and, and I understand the whole idea of, of paring down and all, and all those things. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. But for me, like, I like having a structure and building a structure. Um, so from, like, the way that I approach it is a lot, is very similar to the way that artists approach uh, painting. Where they'll lay a, 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 a foundation down and they'll block out basic shapes and they'll, they'll work on detail afterwards. And, and that's the way that I approach it. Uh, my friend Sam who's also a writer, is, is, is the machine gunner to my sniper, where he tends to write tons of things, um, and he'll have them out, and he'll be like, well, I have like 18 scenes, and I have no idea what order I'm putting them in, but I know they're all going to kind of make the story, and uh, I'm going to have to cut a ton of stuff, but that's fine, and I, I just, I don't work in that way. Um, I, I, just, I just don't, like, I can't, I can't think like that. That's not to say that, that I only write, like, I never, that I never cut things or I never write too much, but just he writes a lot and I write a little and, and they're just different. And, and that's fine. That's perfectly acceptable. Uh, I know people who's like, I still like writing a lot by, like, by hand. Uh, I do all my edits on an actual paper, not digitally. Um, I find it's just easier to work with. Um, it's annoying if you have to transfer things back onto the uh, back onto the screen. Uh, that's super frustrating. But in general, like I just feel more productive doing it that way. Uh, it's easier for me versus on the screen. Uh, but not everyone's like that. Not everyone likes that that sort of style. Um, yeah, I mean that's part of the reason why I have this guy, right? So I can draw and, and experiment and do things. Um, like, that's just things I like, right? So I'm going to talk about process a lot today. I'm going to talk about a process a lot after, after today. Uh, but yeah, keep in mind that, that this is my process. This is the way that I think about it. There's no right way to do it. The only right way is the way that you get things done and get things done well. 
Um, and for you, that's probably pretty different than it is for me. And that's cool. Uh, really what I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying to, uh, get feedback, like get feedback on my own process, but also, uh, see if people, uh, have suggestions, uh, to ways that, or things that might help me improve, but also so that I can suggest things that might help other people improve. Um, so yeah, there's no right way. Uh, but that being said, just because it works for you and it doesn't, uh, just because it works for you doesn't mean it works for somebody else either. So keep that in mind when you're discussing things in, the, in my chats. Um, so yeah, process. And I realize now that after saying all that, I haven't really outlined what, what the process is at all. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's definitely something I'm going to outline a little bit now. Uh, in general, the way that I think about writing, uh, especially something shorter, like a short story, uh, is a little harder to do in novels, but I think about writing a lot in the same way that I think that I used to think about programming when I did that in high school and all that, where uh, for me, in order to stay on task, the, the easiest way for me to do things is to build a structure. Uh, so, uh, in saying that, what I tend to do, um, and I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna explain all of the little, the little parts because I'm gonna explain them in much broader detail later, uh, or as as we continue along the project. Um, but I will, I will just kind of list them off. Uh, so the first thing I tend to do is I tend to write um, a logline or a premise, which is what we'll be doing today in the practical section uh, for the, sh the short story that we're working on here. Um, and then I like to write um, either uh, a one-page summary or a scene list or something that like breaks it up a, a lot bigger uh, into bigger parts. And then uh, from that, I start um, I start drafting some scenes uh, just to see how they feel, get things out, um, and then from there I start I start doing sh short iterations with with much more detailed changes and and um, and kind of working through things. Uh, so you'll see. Um, I wonder do I have a good? I might actually. How much good draft here that's easy to see? Choo, 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 choo. Uh, maybe, maybe. Oh yeah, here we go. This one, this one's good. Um, I don't. Let's see if I can get that there. Oh yeah, it's inverted. That's fine. I just want to show you a kind of a visual example. Uh, so. What you're seeing here is is I'm like highlighting things that I think the phrasing is weird. I'm highlighting things that I think need to be expanded, like descriptions and ideas. I'm pointing out that there's a section missing and I need to get these certain details in on the notes. Um, so this is kind of the way that I think of it, where like I have a basic structure and then it's like, oh well, I'm kind of missing this action, so I need to add that here, and I need to add this here, and this will start. It starts building a, a structure. So that's the way that I approach the, the sort of process. Um, and that's, that's not for everybody. Um, I, cause like, I know Sam can't do it that way at all. Like he's, he's, he doesn't think like that. And, and a lot of people don't. Um, and I've studied a few different methods, like the snowflake method and, and a few other things. Um, and sometimes they help and sometimes they don't. It depends on where you are in the thought process. Um, depends on, on how developed the idea is that you're working on. Um, Stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. I think in, in a lot of ways they help, but in other ways they don't. So I kind of have a, a kind of an alg uh, an amalgamation of a bunch of different ideas of styles uh, work together. And, and, and I adapt freely as to how I think the idea is. Like if I have, um, for certain short stories, like that one that I was working on, 
I had a, an idea and the idea had a beginning, middle and end and had the one, like had the, the main two characters in it. So I could kind of just go, well, this is a, I'm going to write two, three paragraphs saying what it is. And then I'm just going to write it. Um, and I did, and then I went back and I, and I rewrote those summaries and stuff. Uh, and that's perfectly acceptable. In fact, I, I vastly recommend that, uh, where you can go back and, and rework through some of that stuff in order to push the, the whole the t thing as a total, uh, or as a whole later. Um, so yeah, there's, there's certainly, uh, certainly a lot of ways that you can approach that. So today, today, uh, if I haven't said it enough, is uh, ideas and brainstorming. So what is an idea? And, and I know when I was discussing this uh, during the week, I got a lot of eye rolls like, oh, why are you defining things and, and doing all this stuff? I'm like, that's so conceptually and philosophically hard and, and, and all those things. But I, I just, I like to know, especially as a writer, where, we're, where we talk a lot about language and clarity and, and, and communication, like, what does a concept mean? And what does it mean when, when I talk about it? Uh, so, so I did some research, and I actually came to this awesome conclusion when I did this research. But um, the word idea comes from, the, from Greek. And a lot of, a lot of, as a lot of English words do, uh, Greek and, and some Latin and uh, a few other things mixed in there. Uh, French, a lot of French. Um, but it comes from the Greek word uh, idea, uh, which means form or pattern. From the root idean to see. Which is super interesting to me because because basically if you break down that etymology, what it's saying is is an idea is seeing a form or pattern. Which if if you were here for my creativity talk, um, was was exactly what I was talking about about making connections, and and and, and testing testing hypothesis, uh, testing hypothesis. Hypotheses, hypotheses, hypotheses. Uh, in order to, to see those patterns and prove those patterns and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, so those are all, that's like a, like that definition in and of itself really inspires the way that I think about ideas. So yeah. So, so what is an idea? That, that's what an idea is. Um, you need an idea to write a story. You don't need a complete idea, but, but you need a, something. You need something to give you direction. Um, and and this, is, this is something I've, I, I have discussed previously and, and I've been discussing a little bit with other artists um, where people, people ask a lot about like, uh, art block or writer's block and, and all that stuff and, and really what that is is and, and I totally shots fired this last time but I still I still completely agree with my opinion then um, writer's block is, is is not having a jumping off point and it's also a struggle with perfectionism with 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 motivation and and wondering what's good enough. And my answer to you is, who cares? You're probably going to fail anyway, but that's fine because you want to learn from that. Um, you know, uh, a, a a bad idea is is. Uh, that's a really weird analogy, but I'm going to make it anyway. Uh, uh, a bad idea is like that weird friend you have who introduces you to the to the hobby that changes your life. Right? Like if you just stick with it, it 
like, uh, well, I don't want to say stick with it, but if if you learn from it, you can get the good idea that's underneath that awful shell. <laughs> there, there, there's. It, it's it's really hard to describe. Like certain thoughts I have about ideas because trying to describe conceptual thoughts with conceptual thoughts is extremely difficult. Um, but yeah, like I keep saying things like keep everything and, and don't throw things out and don't give up on ideas. And that's true to a certain extent. Um, and I'm not revoking those 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 comments, um, but it, but it is important to keep in mind when when you're not getting anywhere with something, right? Um, and, and and at what point do you declare something like a failure so you can so you can move on? Um, and, and that's a hard, a hard, hard decision to make. Um, and I'm not great at it. And I know a lot of other artists aren't great at it. And, and it's hard because you, you, you want everything to be good, but not everything will be. Um, so yeah, <laughs> basically what I'm saying is, is yeah, don't keep up on anything, but recognize when, uh, what you're like recognize when uh, working on that thing is is only a struggle and doesn't help you improve because at that point you should put it down and you can come back to it later if you really think that it, that there's something that that you can come back to it later when your perspective has changed but that like that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do um Sometimes, and, and this is kind of part of my talk about, uh, about the Eureka moment and all that, sometimes it just it takes a while for your subconscious to fully process all the information that you're trying to grasp, um, or you need that other little piece that's going to make it all come together. So you might have a, a really good idea that like turns out to be a bad idea, but at the same time, like if you just couple it with this other kind of okay idea, it ends up being a great idea later. Um, so yeah, like, yeah, be subjective. Um, there's no, there's no hard or fast rule about, about what's good and what isn't. Um, so you, you have to make those decisions for yourself. And, and I'm sorry that's difficult because it is, and it's difficult for me and, and a lot of other people, but, but them's the breaks. That's how you learn, right? Because as, as you get better, you learn to recognize which ideas are worth more time than others or which ideas are, uh, are more likely to go the distance for you. Um, like right off the bat from, con from conception, uh, and that's fine because you don't throw out those old ones. You just you put them in a side until you're in a place where those are going to be the ideas that are going to that are going to get there. So yeah. Um, and as usual, I think I'm being completely unclear. But as I've learned from watching my vods, I'm not nearly as bad as I think I am, and that's okay. Like that's that's part of me learning about how to present, how to how to talk about art and about writing. I'm learning that nearly as, as much as you're learning from me. Um, and I feel like I'm improving, but uh, it's really hard to tell sometimes. Um, and as all improvement is, like you can't, you can't see the day-to-day -day changes. <laughs> um, and that's cool, that's cool. I mean, that's, that's why you can wake up one morning and suddenly you're able to, to write in a way that you never could before. Um, and, and those moments are magical and, and worth remembering. Uh, so yeah. So you have an idea. Uh, 
I've broken down sort of the concept of ideas uh, in, in, into a couple categories of good jump off points. Um, so the first thing I'm going to start with is seeds. Uh, I spoke about this in the first episode a little bit, uh, but seeds are a part of idea, part of an idea. Um, they're like a, a character or a theme or, or an impression or a, a place like a shady tree or um, you want to do something about a sword or you want to do something in a library or um, I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of throwing things around. Uh, those are those those are seeds to me. They're parts of ideas. They're not a completely fully formed, uh, fully formed concept. You can't write a story with just that, but you can start writing a story with just that. Um, there's a little bit more work to be done before you can get to the actual story parts, but but you can move forward with those little bits. Um, and that's important. It, it's important to recognize that, you know, not everything has to be 100% solidified before you start. That's part, that's part of the process is, is your idea is going to change. It's going to change over, over the course of you writing it, over the course of you, you drawing it. Um, and you're, and you're going to make decisions, uh, to, to do things. Um, I mean, I talk like... I've, I've read some things with interviews with authors where they're like, yeah, there's this, this is this character that I didn't have in the first like three drafts and, and you read the book and you're like, that character is super integral to how it all goes together. Um, or there were other characters that they cut and, and those characters were not important at all. Um, you'll see a lot of that stuff, uh, when you, when you go through the, the, the process, um, and I know artists do a lot where, I, I mean, and I talk about Derek a lot, mostly because I, I hang out in his channel all the time because nobody streams in the morning for whatever reason. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out why no one streams in the morning ever. Uh, but I always watch streams before I go to work when I'm writing. Uh, and, and, and Derek's like gone back and restarted with several images. Um, with new ideas of the same concept of like realizing that, Oh, this didn't work. It was cool, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't at the level that I wanted it to be at. So, so what's the next step I need to take to make it the level I want it to be. Um, and, and, and that's part of the process. That's why there's editing. That's why, uh, there's rewrites. That's why there's all that other stuff. And, and that's also why, um, I keep, I keep reiterating as, as I do, uh, that it, it's better just to put something on the page and fix it later than it is to, to do nothing. Um, because, because once it's on the page, you can fix it. It's not just sitting in limbo waiting, waiting and, and, and it just makes you feel unproductive and bad. And, and you don't want that. You want, to, you want to be moving forward. You want to be putting things on the page so that you can go back and fix them. Um, so if you don't have a, uh, have a good idea, just write down a bad idea and you can make it a good idea later. Like, that can happen. Uh, that can easily happen. Um, so yeah. Um, I, have, I have a joke written here about carefully nurturing seeds. And that's true. And, and I think I've explained that where, you know, it, there's, there's work, there's work from taking a seed and making it into a story. Um, just like there's, there's work from planting a seed and growing it into a plant. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a little bit harder than, than working with a fully formed idea, but, it, but you're not always going to have fully formed ideas. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Um, but sometimes it does. And, and those times are awesome. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so the second sort of type of idea that I have written down here is a premise. Now, apparently, and I didn't know this, but apparently 
premises are, tend to be used in film and screenwriting and almost nothing else. And that really shocked me because I didn't actually know that. Because most of the time when I've talked about premises, it's actually been in sort of the online writing communities. Um, but I suppose a lot of those communities, uh, especially ones related to fan fiction and all that, take a lot of their stuff from, from television terms uh, more so than, than literary writing terms um, and stuff like that. So I can see why that could happen. But yeah, so the idea of a premise is is a fundamental concept that drives the plot. Um, it's it's from an idea in in Greek uh, discourse and logic uh, thinking, and I'm going to talk about uh, well, I'm going to talk. A lot of the stuff that that you talk about when you talk about writing and art actually does come from from Greek, uh, from classical Greek eras, uh, a lot of the stuff that they've said uh, still applies today. Uh, I think of um, Aristotle's uh, book on on dramatic form, which, I mean, Sid Field, who we're reading in the book club this week, uh, talks about all the time, and a bunch of other writing writers have. Or, a bunch of other writing books I have also talk about those, and, and yeah, they, they're very. A lot of those concepts have been around for a long, long time, and we're 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 just figuring out new ways uh, to interpret those concepts. So yeah, uh, a lot of the stuff that that I'm talking about today comes from Greek, uh, classical Greek, uh, like literature and thought and discourse. Um, so yeah, uh, a premise. Uh, it's it's a logical leap uh, that forms the basis of a story. Uh, so I have a couple examples of premises, um, and if you want to put in the chat uh, what they are, but uh, the premise that I've written down: a lonely boy is befriended by an alien. Uh, a small town is terrorized by a shark. A small boy sees dead people. These are premises. These are premises to well-known movies. Um, but yeah, like, like for me, when, when, when I've talked about premises, it's like the idea of what if, uh, what if there was a world without jails? Like, that's premise. It's a concept. It's, it's slightly more developed than a seed because it's more like a setting or it's more like a setting or more like a, it has, it has a lot more detail in it than a seed does, but it's still not a fully formed idea because like having an idea, like there are no jails, like doesn't give me characters. It doesn't give me, um, it doesn't really give me locations, like there's still a lot of other or other details that need to go into it, but it's more formed than just like uh, than just a jail because you have more focus. You have more of a plot focus where you're going to explore this world and and what it means to not have those things or to have these things or whatever the 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 concept is, um, right? Uh, and, and, and you see that kind of in the examples that I said, where it's like a lonely boy is befriended by an alien, but we don't know anything about this boy. We don't know who he is. Uh, like, th th there's, there's more things that we don't even know. Yeah, we don't know who the alien is. Like, we don't know, is he hostile? Is he not? Like, like we don't know anything about it. It's just, yeah. So then, the third type of, of idea thing, because it's not really an idea that I'm talking about, I'm talking about things that form ideas, types of things that form ideas, writing that down. Um, is a question, and uh, I keep referring back to it, 
and I keep referring back to a lot of things. Um, the first episode, you saw how much of a fan of what if questions I am. And I'm a huge fan of what if questions. And what if questions are great ways to construct premises, are great ways to come up with seeds, are great ways to develop ideas. Um, but yeah, asking questions, moving forward from a question you have about something is a great way to come up with a story. Um, speculative fiction for a long time has been kind of a way of exploring our own society. Um, and this goes way, way back to like Gulliver's Travels and like a lot of other things, maybe even past that, uh, though I'm not as familiar with stuff past that. Uh, but yeah, there, there's, there's, Speculative fiction has has been has been a long time discourse for uh, figuring out so society and all that stuff. So you can you can create really cool speculative fiction with what if questions and, and asking questions about the things going on around you. Um, like I think of you know, I mean those premises. The example of premises I gave are basically what if questions without the question and the what if. Because they're, they're kind of stating in a way, what if a lonely boy befriended an alien? Question mark. Right? Um, so yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I think of um, Jonathan Swift. Uh, oh God, what's the name of the thing? A Modest Proposal. You know? Uh, which I realize that probably the only person who knows what I'm talking about in, in the chat right now is Sam. Uh, but a modest proposal is basically like, let's eat babies. Uh, <laughs> uh, which was a thing he wrote as a satire about government and government decisions and all that stuff. But it, it, it's, it's, it, it's a what if question. Um, and, and I think back to those, those examples of the what if Marvel that I show uh, that those are those those little little comic issues are, are are showcasing those kinds of stories. They're not exploring them in great detail. But what if you took one of those issues and made an entire series out of it? There's 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 so many things you can do with a question. Um, and and I'm, I'm trying to think of a really good like kind of like pseudo example here of like a what if question I could throw out to 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 sort of showcase my idea of what if questions, um, but it's not quite coming to me yet. Um, oh, I mean, classic example, because I was talking about James Cameron today. Uh, what if robots overtook the world? I mean, that's basically what Terminator is, <laughs> right? With Skynet and all that stuff, like, there are... Those those are those are the things that you can do. You can construct premises out of questions, and and you can construct ideas out of out of questions and premises. And I keep saying those things. <laughs> I need to I need to stop repeating that I'm repeating, because I realize that repetition is a good way to learn and drive points home. But I keep I keep repeating that I'm repeating, and it's it, it's kind of weirding me out. <laughs> that I keep doing it. So, yeah. Uh, so the last kind of uh, type of thing that you can use to create, to, to create an idea is a theme. And I mean, it, that's literally what I'm doing right now, right? Like uh, my theme for this week is ideas and brainstorming. So I wrote down a bunch of stuff about ideas and brainstorming and, and have created a not exactly a story but but a a a, a construction of, of sorts that follows a set form that has a beginning middle and end that that has an overarching overarching point um being the, the idea of of ideas and brainstorming um and yeah, uh, it, it, themes, <laughs> I lost my point, I lost my train of thought, uh, themes, uh, 
I don't love using themes as a starting point, mostly because themes tend, uh, themes, especially literary themes, tend to be super broad, and and you kind of end up being writing a story that that's a little bit preachy and can end up being kind of boring, because uh, it kind of has a like the only purpose for it kind of has a lesson in it. Um, I think of things like uh, Anne Rand, like things, yeah. Ugh, ugh. Sorry, uh, that's what I think of when I think of like theme writing. I don't love it. I'm not saying you can't do it. You certainly can, and and not ever like using it as a basis is a great way to start. Um, but it, I, I don't recommend just continuing on with just the idea of theme. Uh, because like I said, it ends up being a little preachy. It can end up being boring. You're missing too many of the, the things that, that readers really identify with, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah. Um, and I may need to ban somebody for talking about Atlas Shrugged, but we'll see how it goes. I'm looking at you. You know, you know what you did. So yeah. And on that note, uh, I'm gonna talk. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about idea length. Uh, and this is a concept that not I haven't really seen in books about writing. Um, not that I've read a, like every book about writing ever, but most of the ones I don't I see don't really talk about it. They do talk about certain things like the idea of uh, visual storytelling and, and certain things like that, uh, which is part of what I mean by idea length. Uh, but they don't talk about it in the same way that I th think about it. Um, ideas are really weird. Like uh, some of them, some of them work really well in everything and some of them only work really well in one thing um, and of course when I say things I mean mediums um, so uh, what I mean by that is that short story ideas are ideas that are really good self-contained like four or five scenes max like beginning middle end four or five scenes no exposition, no, no long ending. Um, that's what a really good short story idea is. And often, uh, when I when I've seen writers talk about stuff like this, where they're like, "Oh yeah, I wanted to write a short story, but it just it was just too much, so I ended up writing a novel." <laughs> and, and and that happens. Um, there are certain ideas that only communicate well in certain mediums, and and. Part of this debate is something I, I, um, I've, been, I've been talking about with a few people. Uh, the idea of video game adaptations in film. Um, and I was just reading, actually, an article uh, before I started about... Um, uh, it was basically a breakdown of all of, the, uh, all of the changes made to the Lord of the Rings movie uh, as different from the, the novel Lord of the Rings by J.R.R.L. Tolkien. Tolkien? Tolkien? I just say Tolkien. That's what we're doing. Uh, where they broke it all down, and it, and it was super interesting to me because... Like, that's, that's part of why adaptations can be awful. Or they can be good, or, or whatever. And it's really interesting to see that, that weird juxtaposition of how they work out. Because... Part of what makes a good game idea is gameplay, right? Uh, and, and gameplay is not very well represented on the screen. Where it can be interesting from when you're doing it, but isn't interesting to see some someone do it. Um, I mean, the most uh, the the recent example being like the World of Warcraft. Uh, movie, which might be awesome, might not be, but but you're talking about like 
taking a lot of concept and world building and certain things that worked really well for, for gameplay and stuff and, and making them into a narrative film. And I'm not sure how interesting it's actually going to be. Uh, I know there's a lot of lore and, and, I, and I get that and, and all that stuff, but I don't know. I mean, look at the Super Mario, Mario Brothers movie or like the Doom movie or like a bunch of the other ones that, that were awful, awful ones um, uh, by He Who Must Not Be Named. So I'm not going to name them. But you all know who I mean. Because I'm sure you've seen one of the horrendous movies he's made. Though I didn't mind one or two of them. There were a couple. But most of them, yeah, no. But that's what I'm talking about. Just because a game has a narrative story doesn't necessarily mean that the overarching narrative really works without the gameplay elements in between. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, what, what, I mean, I'm talking about ideally. Um, so, what, I, what I'm saying is, is that uh, kind of drawing back on, on my thing about keeping good ideas and bad ideas and all that stuff, is that sometimes you'll find when you're writing that the idea that you have is not suitable for the medium that you chose. And that's fine. You can go back and rework it into the new medium. That's, that's not a problem. Um, sometimes, sometimes when you drop an idea, uh, you don't know you need to bring it into a new medium and, and that'll click with you later. Uh, but you can do a few things and I'm going to talk a little bit about specifically short story ones when we get to that part of the practical side. And holy crap, it's already been an hour. Uh, when we get to more practical stuff today. Excuse me. Uh, but there are, there are some things you can do to help you make an informed choice about, about what you're trying to do. Which, which I've, I've learned from, from having to rewrite things a billion times in, in a bunch of different mediums. Uh, and and there's, certain, there's certain ideas... Um, about what what works really well in, in certain things. Uh, Sid Field was talking about it in, in uh, the chapter of the book I was reading today. He said when he's uh, talking about what, what makes up a screenplay. How does it differ from novels and plays and, and all those things? Um, because it is. It's, it's, a different, uh, it's a different vocabulary. It's a, it's a different um, thought process. Uh, there's a lot of unique things about that. And short films are different again from, from long form films, from features, which are different again from television writing. Uh, and animation is a whole other thing. And, and there's a lot of different, uh, I mean, it, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like the, the difference between someone who draws manga and, and, and someone who draws uh, realistic still life. Like there's, there's a lot of similarities, but there's also a lot of differences. Um, so, it's important to recognize what, what your idea is good for. Uh, and it can be really hard. I mess it up all the time. Um, uh, I was working on some samples for my portfolio and uh, I was trying to rewrite this, this script that I had written a while back or like trying to finish writing it. And it still sucked. And I just like, I've been thinking it for like a year where I like, I think, I think it really needs to be a game. I feel like having the interactive elements will really drive up its, what's going on in it and will make the ending, like based on player choice, will, will actually cause it to work. Um, and I'm still playing around with it. Like, it's not, it's not a game yet. Um, but yeah, like, I, it, it happens. And, and I have like an almost finished short film, and it's like, oh, I don't want to just drop it. But it really sucks. Like, it's bad. It doesn't make any sense. It has no impact. Period. Ugh. Anyway. Learn from your failures. Because, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, idea link. Write down all your ideas. All right. Uh, I'm going to take a brief break because it's been about an hour.
And um, when we come back, I'm going to talk... I was going to explain uh, log lines and synopsises as part of like kind of the teaching lesson of the first hour, but considering the time, I actually think I'm going to jump right into um, the practical stuff, and I'll do those explanations of log lines and synopsises and stuff uh, when I get to them with the practical stuff. I think it'll be easier to understand, uh, and I kind of want to do some actual writing today uh, on stream, so. I'm a little bit excited. Uh, I don't know if, yeah, I'm probably not going to be doing a ton of actual writing, but I will be doing a little, little bit. Uh, there's going to be a lot more mind maps and brainstorming and, and certain thought processes. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you all in, in about five minutes. Cool. <laughs> 